Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Magic Mask node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and we're going to add a Magic Mask. Now the Magic Mask node that's available in Fusion is the same node that's actually available in the Color Grading tab. The only difference is if you need to actually get human, like organic, magic masks i would probably use the color grading tab because it seems to work a little better so any like human movement or human skin if you're just changing skin color and stuff like that i would use it within the color grading tab because it doesn't work quite as well for human stuff in fusion for some reason it works great for everything else but just for human form it's just not as responsive as it is in the color grading tab but the magic mask is used to uh, kind of automatically generate masks of certain areas and it does this by using paint strokes like the paint note and once you draw your strokes you're able to track those strokes to kind of track that mat across your footage but it really doesn't do tracking tracking per se basically what it does is the mass that's generated from your strokes collectively on everything you select is auto generated on the next frame so it's not necessarily tracking data it's kind of auto generating those paint strokes on the next frame but we'll jump into it and i'll show you so it explains it a little better so the magic mask we're going to connect our footage and we'll get this up there and how this works is you've got two modes you've got faster and better and faster is faster but better isn't that slow so i would operate off of better if you can because it gives you these additional ranges up here to refine your strokes so in order to start pulling color say we needed to change the color of this blue bag here all we have to do is make a stroke and it's going to select and if we need to add color let's zoom in all we have to do is make another stroke make another stroke and it'll slowly start adding those colors in and if we need to remove colors we can hit this picker with the minus and we can remove color and this one up here with the finger just basically allows you to draw a rectangle around stuff around your individual strokes and this one will delete your strokes so once we have our strokes drawn on there it created its own reference frame so if you see on that one frame we've got our strokes with our mask but all of the frames have absolutely nothing so if we track this data what it's going to do is it's going to move these strokes to match this mask it would be the same as us going to the next frame and drawing new new uh, strokes. Go to the next frame, draw another stroke. So we're going to go to our reference and we're going to track backwards. And go back to our reference frame and track forwards. So there we go. We've got a track of our bag across all the footage. Now these problem areas right here, this is where the refine range comes in a little bit. So we can refine our range. And once you do that, you wanna make sure you play it all back to make sure you're not missing something from that refined range. So that looks all right. So down here in the node itself, our tracking buttons, we have our track reverse, our track forward, then reverse, and our track forward. And up here, we've got track 
reverse one frame, we can stop the track or track forward on one frame. And down here we have clear strokes, whether it's on the current frame or entire range or all the strokes. So if we just want to restart, we can just clear all of our strokes. On the go to frame, this is just going to go to our first frame of our track. This one's going to go to our reference frame, which is the first frame we made our strokes on. And this is going to go to the end. And this right here allows you to uh, rebuild or clear out the disc cache. And your regenerate all will rebuild the entire disc cache. And the clear will clear all the frames off. And your reference frame right here just determines the reference frame where you made your initial strokes. And your process frames are the frame range of the footage where your tracking and your strokes occurred. And then down here we have a post multiply. So we can post multiply our image. And then up top we have an additional matte tab. And the matte tab has the typical blur filters, the box, Bartlett, multi-box gaussian and fast gaussian. You can blur your matte. You can erode it. You can change the gamma of your uh, the semi-transparent area around the mat. And you can change the threshold of that gamma. And down here we can restore fringe if we need to. And we can invert the mat. And on our solid and garbage mat we have the ability to invert them. And that comes into play down here because we have our effect mask input. We have our solid mat input and we've got a garbage mat input. So let's go ahead and add a merge. Bring in our footage and we're going to bring in a color corrector. So now with this, we can go into our color corrector and change our color of our bag. And if we play it back, it's not too bad for a quick uh, mask. Now, this is definitely not production ready and uh, it's got a lot of issues going on with it, but for something quick, and if this is all you need, you're fine, you're done. But uh, to go any further and get something better, you'd have to do a little more work. So this would include doing stuff like uh, if we look at our mask and we turn our alpha on, we can see, especially here at the end, we're getting additional stuff from her pant leg coming in and all that stuff would have to be cleaned up. And it's as simple as we could add a uh, polygon and take this and put this into our garbage mat so it's gone and then something like this you would have to pretty much keyframe every single frame so if we keyframed our location and go to the previous frame we can just pull it completely out we can go to the frame after it Pull it. Well, we don't need to pull it. We can move it. Next frame, pull it completely out. So, got that covered. And you do that on every single frame that you need to remove that stuff from. And you would probably definitely have to do this type of rotoscoping and garbage mat and different stuff to an image like this because there's no way you're going to track this. And uh, I say that just from experience. Um, looking at this image itself, you're not going to track this. And we'll, we'll kind of use this as a lesson learned. And I'll, I'll show you, and I'll show you why. So we'll bring this back. And let's say you originally got this footage to throw a logo on there so we can change. The, the client wanted you to be able to change the color of the bag. And change the logos as they need to change. But you're not gonna be able to track this bag to uh, put a logo on there. And uh, let's just bring up the original footage and I'm gonna grab a planar tracker. And 
inputter footage and let's go to the back and we'll set our reference frame here create our little plane to track our bag and we'll change this to hybrid point and a fine and we're going to track to the end and you can see it already slipped so it is not going to track this bag and even if i was to use say uh, something even better we'll bring in mocha pro which is amazing at planar tracking we'll launch mocha and we're going to draw us a little plane and start tracking and it's already losing it especially right there so basically there really is no data even though these planar tracking trackers are amazing at using stuff with no actual data in there this is a simple track but the problem is and i'll show you the problem going to get rid of this and I will bring in a bitmap node so the way planar trackers work is they're they're looking for RGB information and then they're also looking for luminance information contrast within the, the luminance they're also looking for hue changes and In saturation so if I go here and we kind of zoom in on this bag you can see there's not tons of information and as I change you can see that saturation and those shadows changing so these planar trackers are kind of picking that up as movement like especially right there and that's where our tracks are completely sliding off because our saturation is pushing our track off because it thinks it's changing so and this is why you can't track something like this and you would honestly if you wanted to shoot a shot like this with a purpose of being able to track it and make changes you would want to make sure you mark this bag for tracking and uh bring in a paint node And, and I'm telling you all this from experience because it's happened to me. So, so, and this is stock footage. So this isn't something I shot because had I shot this and I had the intent of tracking this bag, I would have uh, definitely made some changes to the bag and made sure I put tracking markers, make that a little larger. I put tracking markers around this bag that way the trackers had something to actual track so this is why this bag is not going to track and you're not going to get that logo on there unless you manually do it frame by frame and use transpose or transform to actually move your logo but as far as the magic mask note goes, it did a pretty good job other than having to clean it up and do different stuff. Now, some people may say, well, it's got a track in there. Why can't we use that track of that paint data to put a logo on there and attach it by connecting it to that track data? Meaning if in theory with other tracking stuff we can go here and go to our uh, our track info which is here and we can say hey let's publish this tracking data now if we go to our modifiers it really doesn't have any tracking information well that's the post multiply and there's no button down here to actually publish 
our tracking data to be able to use in another node to say connect it to the node to follow it. So that is uh, why you can't use this node as tracking info. But if anybody happens to know how to use this tracking data to attach something else to it, by all means, leave us a comment. But that is the Magic Mass node, and I will see you in the next node breakdown.